On the 19th of January 2023 in Riyadh, the Saudi Pro League club Al Nasir played a home game against a rival Al Etifak. The game ended in a 1-0 win to Nasir, but it marked a significant shift in the world of football. Cristiano Ronaldo had just made his debut for the home team. The season would play out with Al Nasir finishing in second place. Then, when all the leagues around Europe were coming to a close, the rest of the clubs in the Saudi Pro League got to work on their summer recruitment. Transfermarket.co.uk suggests the league is the fifth highest spending this summer and puts it in front of the Spanish La Liga. So, in the heart of the Arabian desert, we could suggest a football revolution is stirring. Foreign wealth is altering the landscape of football in dramatic ways. Although there is a couple of players who have declined the lure of what seems like a name your price contract option. As the cumulative salaries of the players moving to the Saudi Pro League amounts to over 1 billion US dollars, which eclipses the English Premier League's total of 226 million US dollars and dwarfing the 105 million US dollars for the top 10 MLS players. The numbers are a testament to the incredible power money wields over the beautiful game. So how does this model differ to China's onslaught of the European transfer market in 2016 and the growth of the English Premier League over the last 30 years, which has arguably grown into the most lucrative league in the world in terms of player wages and club values? And more importantly, is it sustainable? Let's get into it. In the city of Riyadh, a profound strategy has been meticulously woven, which seems extremely different to Xi Jinping who, before his presidency, once revealed his three wishes tied to football were qualifying for the World Cup for a second time, hosting it, and ultimately emerging victorious. This desire ignited a race among powerful corporations, particularly property developers hoping for political gain. They acquired football clubs and lavishly invested, inflating the market. Yet, the Chinese government soon grew apprehensive. They witnessed their wealth seeping out of the nation, filling the coffers of foreign clubs, agents and football stars like Carlos Tevez, who brazenly equated his time in Shanghai to a vacation. It was a bitter pill to swallow as Chinese clubs were outspending their Korean and Japanese competitors by a factor of 10 to 4 respectively, but still lagging behind in performance. The legendary transfer window of 26-2017 was the turning point. The authorities stepped in, enforcing a transfer tax a penalty on pricey foreign signings, along with a series of salary caps to contain the spiralling expenses. However, an unforeseen break slammed onto the football scene, an economic slump, particularly in the overinflated property market. This brought things to a standstill, with most leading clubs partially or entirely owned by debt-ridden real estate firms, the financial extravagance was curbed. The COVID-19 pandemic only intensified the slowdown. The football narrative began to shift. The headlines were no longer about renowned footballers voyaging to the east, but about once mighty clubs spiralling downwards. The reigning champions, Jiangsu FC, disbanded in 2021, followed by Chongqing and Hawaii, once led by Manuel Pellegrini, and Guangzhou City dissolved shortly afterwards. The Guangzhou Evergrande, previously praised as Asia's inaugural superclub, was struck under a staggering debt of 250 billion by 2021. The club had no choice but to field a majority of juveniles in their team, culminating in their relegation. In the heart of Saudi Arabia, a grand vision is taking shape, orchestrated by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The strategy aims to transform the country into a global sporting hub, with the football industry playing a critical role. The goal? To diversify an economy overly dependent on oil, project a vibrant image of Saudi Arabia as a modern, dynamic business and leisure destination, and inspire a health-challenged population to embrace sports actively. Four clubs, Al Nasir, Al Halal, Al Hitiad, and Al Hali, emerge as torchbearers of this aspiration. Their target is challenging, propel the league into the global top 10 in terms of revenue by 2030. Yet, with the backing of Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, this dream doesn't seem too distant. In the footballing world, Saudi Arabia outshines China with impressive continental records, amplified financial strength and greater international exposure. The country holds a strong global influence, courtesy of football icon Cristiano Ronaldo and his expansive social media presence. However, it isn't all a smooth ride. Past issues with club management and significant debt led to global obscurity. 
Yet, with the Crown Prince's intervention and increased international attention, these challenges are unlikely to go unnoticed in the future. As Saudi Arabia embarks on this ambitious journey, the football world watches with bated breath. Will it experience its own crisis like China, or will it emerge as a powerful player in the global arena? And if the latter is to come true, what impact does this have on the current superpower of world football, the English Premier League? Stay tuned for part two where we will dive deeper into this topic. In the meantime, what are your thoughts on the impact of Saudi Arabia on the football world? Comment below and let's get this discussion going.